In this video, I'm going to continue working on the elevator problem, uh, problem number five in this assignment, 3.1.7 machine control design. So, um, last video we worked on opening and closing the door, and now I'm going to work on uh, moving the elevator from floor to floor. I'm going to simplify things a bit. I'm going to only have two floors, and I'm going to ignore this. Uh, constraint here at the bottom that uh, has the elevator always return to the first floor when it's not being used. Um, just to simplify things, not that it can't be done, but uh, you'll see as we go along. Uh, we'll, we'll create a simple program and then uh, you can go ahead and modify it to include this last constraint. So we're only going to have two floors and there's not going to be a push button inside the elevator. Uh, but there will be a push button outside the elevator so that the, the user will press the button on, on uh, just outside the elevator to call the ele elevator to their floor. So uh, here's the program. At the digital ports 5 and 6, I have two switches, uh, limit switches, and uh, labeled at first floor and that switch it, it, in practice would be a limit switch that would sense whether the elevator is sitting at the first floor and uh, whenever the, the elevator stops at the first floor that switch would be triggered and it would be go to from 0 to 1. Uh, likewise at digital port 6 I have another limit switch that senses whether or not the elevator has stopped at the second floor. At digital port 7 and 8 I have my call buttons. These could be bump switches or they could be limit switches, whichever you like. But uh, these would, these would uh, simulate the buttons that are outside the elevator on the first floor so the, the customer would go up and press the button to call the elevator to their floor or to open up the elevator door. There's one on the first floor and one on the second floor. In ports, digital port 10, 9, and 10, there are LEDs. And the this LED, the first floor LED, would actually be in practice would be sitting inside this push button. So when you press the button on the first floor, the LED lights up, uh, giving you feedback that the, you act, the button has actually been actuated and that the elevator will be coming to your floor. And likewise, this LED in practice would be sitting inside this button so that when you press the button on the second floor it illuminates and lets you know that the, um, the elevator has been activated. In port 10 of my motor uh, motor section I have an elevator on motor and I call it um, elevator and it's a VEX 393 and that's in port 10. So here's my program. I start out by creating a variable, an integer variable called variable called state floor. Now I'm, I'm going to be using uh, the state command, the switch command, and so I'm going to identify four states. And um, right after I, I initialize my state floor, I go into my main task. I start out by turning off my LEDs. I want to make sure they're turned off just for convenience, but also uh, so I don't have to be uh, physically restarting all the time, but they'll, they'll automatically turn off once, when I, every time I restart the program. So I turn off my LEDs, and then I start my continuous loop. And it's a series of four if statements, and I'm asking, I'm querying, and I'm asking, am I at the first floor? And, and is someone calling, has someone pressed the first floor button? first floor call button. That's state 1. If that's if those two statements are true, uh, state 1, be, state floor becomes 1, uh, the, and so forth. Uh, if the elevator is, at, is on floor 1 and someone from the second floor presses a call button, then uh, state floor will, be, will be, become 2, and so forth. Uh, if, uh, so once I've identified my state, it's either one, two, three, and four, I drop down to my switch statement and I and I um, 
perform whichever case the, I perform the current case. So if the elevator is sitting at first floor and someone walks up and presses the first floor button, I'm in case one and I process these steps and so forth. <clears throat> so I'll walk you through one, one of the cases. So in case one, the first thing that happens is the LED turns on and lets the customer know that uh, they press the button and the light activates to let them know that uh, the button is working and that the elevator is being called. I have a wait statement, wait one second, and I have them throughout the program. What this wait is actually going to be, I'm going to say in the next step uh, of our program, when I create step three, we're actually going to, uh, this will be replaced with the elevator door program. So I'll make a call here to our elevator door program, and it'll actually be a function uh, that'll be part of this program. So I'll in, wherever I see a wait, I'm gonna, I'm going to go through my the steps required to process my elevator door. I'm gonna open the door, let the customers come in, and then I'm gonna close the door. So the passengers on board, I start the motor, I go up, and then I wait. I do a, a, the command is wait until it's a new command. I wait until I've reached the second floor, and once I've reached the second floor. I process what's in these uh, in the curly braces. I stop the motor. I wait again. In this case, I would be opening up the door, letting the passenger off. I close the door. I turn the LED off on the first floor, and I break. I I come back and I ask my if statements again. And I, I wait. Essentially, I'm waiting. My my elevator is at the second floor, and I'm waiting for someone to press a button. So actually, the next uh, the next state that would occur would be either two or four. Uh, I'm on the second floor, and someone presses a button on the first floor, or I'm on the second floor and someone presses a button on the first on the second floor, and so forth. Walk through this and uh, make sure you understand it. Enter this program into um, into Robot C. Uh, set up your Cortex. And debug your program and give me a call when you're done and I'll, and I'll check your program and set up and make sure it's working right.